get a read from economist Steve Moore and Geltrude and company founder Dan Geltrude. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thanks for being here. So, Steve, this week in Chicago, of all places, where a lot of businesses are moving out, a lot of people are moving out as a result of high taxes, crime, all sorts of things, the president rolled out his, his Bidenomics speech. What did you make of it? Well, look, David, uh, all of those people you all just interviewed on the street have it right. It is a good jo jobs market right now, no question about it, and inflation has come down, and that's a good thing, too. But it's also true that the price of food, the price of gas, the price of airline tickets, transportation, cars are up. And so you've got this problem, David, where 22 of the last 24 months, people's wages have fallen behind the price of goods and services. And that's why more and more Americans are feeling financially stressed out. And you see that, by the way, in the credit card uh, debt numbers. They keep escalating month after month because people have to borrow more and more money just to maintain their living standard. So I would give this economy at best a C minus and maybe a D because, of course, it's all being financed by debt. Well, by the way, can we keep that up on screen for a second while I talk to Dan about it? What you're looking, the blue line shows shows yeah. the the uh, wage increases over the past couple of years since the president's been in office. Right. The yellow line shows the actual. That is, once you take inflation into account, people are losing money. People feel like they're spending more for the same amount of stuff that they were they were buying uh, two years ago during the last administration. So uh, the president says, hey, look, everything's doing great. It's like he's selling, you know, cheap hamburgers and calling them T-bone steaks. Well, when you look at the latest AP poll on how Joe Biden is doing with the economy, he's only got a 34 percent approval rate, which means two thirds of the people out there are not feeling it, David. And, and they shouldn't, because that graph that you just had up on the screen tells the story. People are not getting uh, concentrating on all these numbers. That's for the economists to work on. What people feel is as follows. What's in my bank account? So yes, I may be making more money, but I have to go to my credit card in order to cover my expenses. And, and personal debt in U.S. history has never been higher. And that's the pain that people are feeling, and that's why we see those numbers. But Steve, you know, it's just about six months ago that everybody seemed to be saying we were going into a recession. Clearly, those GDP numbers don't show that. I mean, the GDP numbers were much better than expected, 2% as opposed to the 1.4% the that was expected. I mean, could it be that things are looking even brighter as we get closer to the election? Well, look, for the, for the last, uh, you know, uh, year and a half or so, the economy has grown by a little over 1%, even with those new numbers in. So those are pretty dismal numbers. Look, I believe if Trump policies were still in place, we'd be growing at 3 or 4%. Remember, the, all of this economic malaise is at a coming at a time when we should be in a boom. Don't forget, David, we came out of COVID. COVID was over when Biden came into office, one of the things that really annoyed me about what he said in his speech is, oh, the economy was in wreckage when he came in. No, it wasn't. The last six months of the Trump administration had created a boom coming out of COVID. Well, and in fact, Dan, the economy was growing 6% in January 2021 yes. when Biden took over, exactly. and we had 1.4% inflation. So uh, the average worker was getting much more than, than uh, what they're getting now. Uh, there's no question about that. And that's why people are feeling the pain. And listen, keep in mind what the federal government is doing right now through the Fed. They're still going to go back to increasing interest rates. Why? It's because they're trying to tamp down the growth. And what's that about? Listen, it doesn't make sense. What we really need to focus on is not trying to manufacture an outcome through government interference. What we really should be doing is let the, the American economy grow as it will. Free it, take the handcuffs off, and then let's see how we do compared to what Biden economics are doing. All right, well, let's bring in the Center for Economic and Policy Research co-director, Mark Weisbrot. Uh, and Mark, you've, you've heard what your colleagues there are saying about, about the, the, the perception that Americans have that the economy is not doing 
well. You heard the president on Wednesday saying that it is doing well. Uh, how does he make his case when, when he's dealing with this perception by Americans? Well, thanks for having me. And I want to say just uh, on a point of agreement, I agree with what your guest said about the Fed. The Fed should not have raised interest rates 10 times and they shouldn't be raising it further. And that, you know, if we have a recession, that's what's going to cause it. But it's not Biden. You know, Biden, well, if you want to look at these uh, these responses that people give to pollsters, I mean, they ask, when you ask people how they're doing personally, financially, they say very good. And they say the economy is terrible because that's what they're getting from the media, whereas the first thing is their actual experience. And you can see this, you know, the Wall Street Journal, a conservative uh, news outlet, had a, a headline story in uh, May uh, saying that uh, workers are happier than they've been in decades. That was a headline in May, okay? Job satisfaction was at a 36-year high. Why is that? Because a lot of people can leave their job if, they're, if it's bad, okay? And that's because, uh, you know, the unemployment rate has been 3.4 to 3.7 percent since March 2022. You can't, you got to go back to World War II to get uh, unemployment rates like that. So that's really one really huge thing for people. You and I don't worry about uh, unemployment, but uh, millions of people yeah. do. And then you have, you know, the bargaining power they get from that. And, you know, by the way, on wages, you know, you have to look, you can't just take one year and look at the average. You got to look at the median. You got to look at the bottom uh, uh, sectors of the labor force because the average is pulled up by really yeah, but high Mark, Mark the, the, the point is, is, is people's perception is reality. I mean, people know how well, much they spend. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. People reality. know how they spent a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of years ago, and they can't get the same amount of stuff now. Yeah, well, that that isn't really true. I mean, look at the weight. OK, look at the median. <laughs> You're telling them the not to believe wage. their own eyes and their own look, pocketbook. That, look at that the, won't I'm work. Sorry. Steve, hold on a second. The Steve, go ahead. Numbers. D D David, We're using I, the I same the, source. The OK, on hold on a second, numbers. Mark. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, under Trump, uh, in, in four years, we had a six thousand five hundred dollar increase in me real median income. It was a boom and middle class people benefited the most. So far, under Biden, the average family has lost about $4,000 in purchasing power. So they're not better off. They're much worse off, and they were much better off under Trump's policies. Yeah, well, averages. Go ahead. Yeah, look at the median wage. It's risen since the pandemic. Wages at the bottom, the ninth percentile, uh, the 10th percentile is risen 9% adjusted for inflation. You're not disputing these numbers. These are the numbers well, you're using. Well, he is disputing okay? them. I this don't know if you can see him, but he was shaking his head no during during what you were to, putting well, out. Gentlemen, you know, I'm sorry. We have, had, we have literally run out of time. Right we thank you all for joining us. And an even bigger thank you to everyone at home for watching. Stick with Fox for the very